Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about changing the management IP address of your Packet Master using the command line interface. And in this video I'm specifically going to address doing this using Secure Shell. Uh, you can accomplish the exact same thing using a serial connection, and in a lot of cases that has its advantages. Um, but we'll address that in a different video and just focus on SSH for this one. So if you're unboxing your Packet Master for the first time, the device is going to have a default IP address of 192.168.0.200 and a slash 24 subnet. So the first step would be to change the configuration of your computer's NIC to be on the same subnet as the default IP of the Packet Master. If you're unsure of how to do that, we have videos on all of the most common operating systems and how to change your NIC configuration settings on those. Okay. Next, we're going to have to establish our SSH connection. And if you're on a Linux machine or um, a Mac, then you have an SSH utility built right into your terminal. If you're on Windows, you have a lot of choices for programs to use to do this. You uh, have the classic standby putty, uh, TerraTerm, you can use my personal favorite XShell, um, or any other utility that will allow you to establish an SSH connection will get the job done. So let's go ahead and open up a terminal window here and type the command ssh admin at 192.168.0.200 and it's worth pointing out here that by default authentication is not turned on in the web GUI of the Packet Master but you will always need uh, some kind of credentials to access the command line uh, unless you're doing it via a serial connection um, and our default user is going to be admin and our default password is either going to be Kubro, all lowercase, or admin, all lowercase, depending on the device. Once we put that in, we're greeted with this banner here showing that I'm on a Kubro EX2, and we see our current IP address right here. Now we have a nifty little utility built right into the shell of the Packet Master called EX Menu, all lowercase, all one word, if I can type it correctly. And upon entering that, you're going to get a small menu that's going to give you the most common information that you're probably going to want to access using the command line, uh, including checking your current management configuration and changing it, which is what we're about to do. You can also check the status of your SFPs, change the port speed on your fiber connections, reset the counters, and you can enable or disable the web server. So if you're a CLI jockey and you don't plan on using the web GUI, you can go ahead and disable that right here and decrease the attack surface of the device. All right, let's just choose option three and see our current management configuration. And it's going to, this is not going to change after the reboot. We see that right here. And choosing option two is going to prompt us to enter a new IP address. I'm just gonna choose something on the same subnet for simplicity simplicity's sake and we can either hit enter here to use the default value it gives us which is a slash 24 subnet or um, we can type in our own and the same thing with the gateway you can enter the default just by hitting enter or we can type in our own if it's different from what it offers us okay upon doing that it's going to look like our screen's locked up but of course what's happened is now that we've changed the ip address of the device we're connected to uh, we've killed our SSH session. So I'm just going to open up a new terminal window here. And we'll see that we should be able to ping that new IP address. And if we can. Okay, so we can go ahead and establish an SSH connection back to our device. Now, there's one other way to change your management configuration using the command line, and I'm going to show that to you now. So at our root prompt here, we're just going to type config, and then we're going to type configure terminal. And at this point, um, the command to change our default gateway is going to be management route add gateway and then whatever our new gateway is going to be. And I recommend changing the gateway before you change the IP address because of what we just saw earlier. As soon as we change the IP address, we're gonna kill our SSH session and we'll have to reconnect if we still need to change the gateway. So we'll do that. And then for the IP address itself, we're gonna change it by using management IP address 
and then go ahead and type whatever your new address is. I'm just going to go back to the original default. And then follow that up with netmask, and then whatever you would like your subnet mask to be. And again, our SSH session was just killed. But if we go back to our original terminal, which probably timed out by now. Oh, actually, it's active again because I changed the IP back. See that we have our device. Right there. And that's how you change the management IP configuration of the Packet Master using the command line and SSH. All right, until next time, guys.